Dynamics of Rotational Motion You must have seen many objects in rotational motion in your daily life. A few examples are a merry-go-round, the turntable inside a microwave oven, a CD or a DVD, a cycle wheel, a ceiling fan and a table fan. In all of these examples, each particle in the rigid body executes a circular motion about a fixed axis. The fixed axis about which the particle rotates is called its axis of rotation. When a rigid body rotates about an axis, all the particles of the body rotate through the same angle at the same time. Let us consider AB as the reference line. Consider a particle of the body at point O. The angular position of this particle is theta1. As the body rotates, the angular position of the particle changes to theta2 in time delta t. The angular displacement of the particle is calculated as shown. Angular displacement is expressed in radians. When the body completes one rotation, the particle traces a distance s around the circle, which is the circumference of the circle. Dividing both sides of the equation by r, we get the equation as shown. Therefore, 2 pi radians correspond to an angle associated with one complete rotation that is 360 degrees. Pi radian corresponds to an angle of 180 degrees. This new unit of angular measure is called the radian which is defined as the arc length along a circle divided by the radius of the circle. The particles that move along a straight line possess linear velocity while particles that move along a circle possess angular velocity. Consider a rigid body rotating about an axis. Let theta1 be the angular position of the particle of the body at time t1 and theta2 be the angular position of the particle at time t2. The average angular velocity of the particle is the rate of change of angular displacement with time. As the particles of a rigid body are locked together, these equations are valid for the entire rigid body. For very small interval of time, we define the instantaneous angular velocity as shown. The direction of angular velocity is given by the right hand thumb rule. If we curl the fingers of our right hand along the rotating body pointing in the direction of rotation, then the extended thumb points in the direction of angular velocity. If the angular velocity of a rigid body changes with time, the body undergoes angular acceleration. If omega 1 and omega 2 are the angular velocities of a rotating rigid body at time t1 and t2 respectively, then average angular acceleration of the rigid body is expressed as shown. For very small time interval, we define instantaneous angular acceleration as shown. Have you ever wondered why a doorknob is placed far away from the door's hinge line? If you push the door at a point near the hinge line, you have to apply a greater force to open the door. 
Similarly, if you apply the force at any angle other than 90 degrees to the plane of the door, greater force is required to open the door. So, let's define a new quantity called torque that represents the turning action of force. Torque depends on three factors, magnitude of force, direction of force and location of the applied force. Torque is represented as the cross product of the position vector and the force vector. Here, the position vector is the vector from the hinge line to the point of application of the force. The magnitude of the torque is expressed as shown. Here, phi is the angle between the position vector and the force vector. If phi is zero, there is no torque. That is, if you pull the door parallel to the plane of the door, the door does not rotate. The direction of torque can be obtained using the right hand rule. If we point the fingers of the right hand along the direction of the position vector and curl the fingers towards the force vector, then the extended thumb points in the direction of torque. Rotating systems show certain phenomena which appear to be strange when we apply our knowledge of linear motion. One such phenomenon is gyroscopic precession. Let us understand gyroscopic precession with the help of an activity. Here we have a wheel hanging from two ropes, one on either side of the wheel. Let us cut one rope. The wheel falls down due to gravity as expected. Let's understand this phenomenon. There is torque acting on the wheel due to the gravitational force. The direction of torque and angular momentum is as shown. Hence the wheel swings in the anti-clockwise direction as shown. If the wheel is rotated and released, then we observe the strange phenomenon of gyroscopic precession. Why does this happen? When we rotate the wheel in the anti-clockwise direction, its angular momentum will be acting along the axle in the outward direction. However, there is also a torque due to gravitational force which is along the direction as shown. So the angular momentum of the wheel chases the torque and consequently we see the bizarre precession of the wheel. Let us summarize what we have learned so far.